Hey YouTubers, Zuski Films here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, flush out the brake system on a 2016 BMW R1200 GS Adventure. And when I talk about flushing, I'm actually going to be using the brake bleed method for doing this. So we'll we'll be bleeding the brakes and flushing the system, basically following the recommendations out of the manual, which state you should flush out the system after the first year which I'm at right now, and then after that, every two years. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the uh, GS911 Wi-Fi system today in order to um, flush out the ABS system. And inside the program for this device, there is a stepped procedure for, for doing the bleeding, flushing. Um, I think it calls for three different uh, bleedings and two flushes in between. So we're gonna be following that. And so in this case, you're gonna need uh, a GS911 system. I don't know what the difference is if you don't pump out the uh, ABS system or flush out the ABS. I don't know if it makes a difference one way or the other. One of the things I'm curious is to see when it does the flushing out of the ABS, does it actually uh, put uh, the brake fluid back into the reservoir? So we'll bleed it. Uh, there'll be a drop in the uh, the brake reservoir and then we'll uh, we'll see if uh, it fills up from the ABS system when we do the flushing. So we'll see how that works. Okay, some of the other things that we're gonna need, uh, some paper towels for cleaning up uh, any brake fluid that gets, um, that comes out during the, um, the bleeding or flushing process. Uh, we don't want it sitting on the, uh, the components. Uh, some DOT4 brake fluid. I've done some research online. It seemed like Pentosin. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, correctly or not. Uh, made in Germany. Uh, seem to have a high recommendation, so using that, some brake cleaner in case we, uh, or I make mis uh, a mess, want to make sure I can clean that up quickly. I have two wrenches for uh, opening up the uh, bleeder valves, or bleeder, um, yeah, I guess they're called valves. Uh, there's an 8 millimeter uh, for the front. Uh, there's two calipers up front, so there's going to be two brake uh, or bleeder valves in the front, and then there's one in the back, and the back uses an 11 millimeter. I've got a T20 Torx wrench for removing the uh, brake uh, reservoir for the front. Uh, I'm also gonna take off a side panel to connect the um, GS911 Wi-Fi system to the, the bike, and I'm gonna need to remove that side panel. Um, I do have a uh, bleeder bag for the, uh, for the old brake fluid. We're going to put that into this bag and it'll be um, more easily disposable after we're finished. And I also have some bleeder valves, which I'm doing because I don't have two people. I don't have uh, another person to help me out. And I'd, I've used the, uh, the vacuum pump method in the past with not a lot of success. I just don't think there's a tight seal on the one I used. I'm sure there's more expensive ones, but um, I saw these uh, speed bleeder uh, valves online. Um, for the most part, they had good reviews. I also installed one on my old R100-7, worked great. So basically it's a check valve that allows uh, the brake fluid to come out when you pump the brakes. Um, and then when you release the brake, uh, the check valve prevents air from coming back into the system. So I'm going to be replacing the uh, factory uh, bleeder valves with these speed bleeders. Um, these speed bleeders do come with uh, a thread sealant already on the threads. Um, I did order some extra because after bleeding these brakes uh, two or three times, the, um, the sealant on the threads uh, may come off and uh, there's a potential for air getting in through those, um, through those threads. So just wanted to point out that if you buy a different version or different brand of speed bleeder, make sure you've got thread sealant either on the valve when you purchase it or buy a separate bottle. All right, I wanted to mention that I'm also gonna be keeping the uh, brake uh, reservoir this is for the front, the brake reservoir cap on when I change out the bleeder valves. That way it um, should prevent a lot of uh, brake fluid from coming out when um, replacing it with the old one. All right, so I'm putting a rag here so I don't make a mess and I've got some brake cleaner in case it starts dripping, but from what I've seen in other videos, it didn't really uh, didn't really spill out too much. It doesn't gush out when you remove this uh, the factory installed uh, bleeder valve. Now let's just see what this valve looks. Get started. See how this goes. Taking the old one off. 
Have the new one ready. Not much came out. I put it upside down. So this is the front right brake on the 1200 GS Adventure. There we go. So that and that locked it. All right, now I'm doing the front left, and again I'm just gonna pop off the uh, rubber cover. Let me go ahead and get ready for. A brake fluid that comes out. So this one has a little bit more coming out than the up. Oh, uh, sorry, the right side. Don't want to over over tighten it. All right, now I'm going to be putting on the rear speed bleeder uh, for the rear brake, and um, I'm going to put some more information into the description area for uh, which speed bleeders I use on this 2016 uh, 1200 GS Adventure. Uh, there are two versions. There's the standard metal version. I'm not sure what quality steel, but then there's the stainless steel version, which is what I went with. These come off pretty easy. Since it's brand new, I'm assuming that's uh, one of the reasons for this. It shouldn't take much time to do each year. Okay, right there. Okay, next I'm going to remove this side panel. This is on the right side of the, uh, the bike. This is where the uh, diagnostics connector is. This is where I'm going to connect the GS911 Wi-Fi unit to. Okay, here's the uh, diagnostics connector. Just gonna pull that, take off the cap. Line up the GS911. Give it a little tug now. Okay, now that I have it connected, I've already configured this device uh, with my laptop and the uh, software, so when I connect it, it automatically connects to um, through Wi-Fi to the software program on the PC. All right, in order for the GS911 to um, communicate with the bike, we do have to turn it on, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the ignition on. You don't have to turn the bike on, just uh, turn on the power, and um, it should be able to make a connection. Okay, so I'm assuming you've gone through the process of connecting the GS911 um, software and setting up the connection between uh, the device and the computer. So if you double click on the program, I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, open browser for selected device. So this is basically the program that we come in and can look at error codes, set up the service reminder, I believe you can do the date and time, things like that. Um, and we're going to go to, let's go to series. We've got to choose our bike. Now, I purchased the, the standard 911 Wi-Fi, which get, allows me to connect up to 10 bikes. Uh, the unlimited version, or the full version, gives you unlimited uh, number of bike connections. So I have a 1200 GS Adventure, liquid-cooled. That's our, oh, sorry, e, uh, ABS brakes. Okay, we're going to do the service functions. 
a, uh, ABS functions and here's the bleed brakes. So here is the process. Uh, we're going to do a mechanical bleeding. Um, it doesn't tell you how far to, uh, to bleed it. Uh, I'm assuming maybe a few pumps just to get any air out. Uh, what I'm going to do is pump it uh, or bleed it until the reservoir goes down to about a quarter of the height where it should be. Then we're going to use the GS911 to flush uh, the ABS system from the pressure modulator. So that's flush one. Then I'm going to bleed it again, flush it again from the GS911, and then do a third bleeding process. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is take off the uh, brake reservoir lid. So that's what it looks like on the underside. Just place that down. I have okay. So I'm going to connect the um, bleeder bag to the speed bleeder. This is where I need a let's see an eight millimeter, eight millimeter wrench. Okay, I'm going to open up quarter churn. Okay, let's see if that, if I start pumping the brakes. There we go. Okay, go ahead and close this valve up. Okay. Again, you don't want to over tighten these. These uh, speeder valves are don't take much to uh, to break off, from what I understand. So um, you do want to be careful. I think once you feel it stop, just a small uh, tug, just to make sure it's fully seated. Obviously, when you're riding a bike, you'll see if it uh, if it begins to to uh, leak, then you'll you'll see that, and uh, you can tighten it up a little bit more. Okay, so one of the things um, that I did on the front right was I probably went down too far with the brake fluid because on, in the reservoir because I still need to do the left one. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up some more fluid. And now I can do the, the left one. Okay, so now we're going to connect the uh, speed bleeder back to the left brake. Okay, crack it open. A uh, quarter of a churn. Let's pump the brake. Takes about 15 to 20 pumps, I think, to get it down to about a quarter level. Okay, let's close it up. And now let's do the back brake. Okay, now we're doing the back brake and remove the uh, back brake reservoir cap. Got some newspaper to put this down on. Quarter churn.
Okay, so I put the cap back on for the uh, rear brake uh, reservoir. I did not uh, put back the the insert. I'm not sure what that's called, but I'll call it an insert. Just to, in case when I flush the ABS, it's going to shoot brake fluid in. Didn't want it shooting out. Same thing with the front brake uh, front brake reservoir. I just put one screw in just to prevent the uh, brake fluid from spitting out in case... Uh, that happens. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm not sure what will happen when we do the flush. All right, I'm going to continue with. Uh, I've just led the uh, brakes for the first time. Now I'm going to continue with flush one. And you have to press the brake at least three times for two seconds. You can hear it vibrate. Two, three, so I'm pressing it and holding it for at least two seconds. I'm going to do it a couple more times, holding it down for two seconds. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to let it finish its process. So now you want to repeat the mechanical bleeding process for the second time. I actually perform the second bleeding and the third bleeding, but don't show it in this video to keep the overall length of this video down. Right now I'm going to continue with flush two. I just flushed it out the second time. We're going to do the same thing, hold down the brake at least three times for two seconds each time. Okay, one, two, release. One, two, release. And then the third time, one, two, release. Okay, I'll do it one more time. One, two, release. And one more. One, two, release. So I did it five times. I only needed to do it three, but I had the time. No big deal. Now repeat the mechanical bleeding process for the third and final time. All right, so once you're finished with the third and final brake bleeding, you're all set. You can go ahead and close up the brake reservoirs and don't forget to put those rubber caps back onto the bleeder valves. I also wanted to mention that the ABS uh, flushing process does not pump brake fluid from the ABS unit back into the reservoir. As I suspected, it basically uh, bleeds the air from the ABS unit. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to my channel.